My wife Kate had recently gone on a trip with her friends. It was supposed to be one of those girls only type things. They had all gotten together, rented a couple hotel rooms in the city, and planned to live it up or so they said. When Kate first told me about this little mini vacation, I thought it sounded like a good idea. She was still on the fence about going, but after talking with me, I managed to convince her that it would do her some good. My wife is a workaholic. She works far more than any person I've ever met, and she rarely takes any time for herself. That's not a bad trait by any means, but everyone needs some time to unwind and blow off a little steam. Not to mention that she's been ranting over the last few months that her new supervisor is a complete asshat. He shoves all of his work on his lower employees, and still expects them to finish their own responsibilities as well. That's what happened about a month ago. Things were becoming more and more stressful at work, and right before the boiling point, my wife decided to take some extended time off. The week finally arrived, and as I was getting ready to go to work myself, Kate was already busy packing her bag. I asked her to call me when she gets there, and to call me if she needed anything. She thanked me, gave me a kiss goodbye, and proceeded to climb into an SUV that sounded like it had a Katy Perry concert inside it. The day continued normally, and I finally made it home from work. The sun had long since set, and I went to bed a few hours later. I hadn't received a single call or text from Kate, though I wasn't worried. Usually when things are happening, you tend to forget the small stuff. So instead, I just texted her goodnight and went to sleep myself. The next morning when I awoke, I groggily checked my phone. I had a missed call at around 4am from Kate. She didn't leave a voicemail, so I figured she must have been out drinking all night and she didn't make it back to the hotel room until the early hours of the morning. A few more days passed and I hadn't received so much as a single word from Kate. I was starting to get a little worried. So I decided to call and check in on her. The phone rang a few times before it sounded like someone had answered, but there was no greeting. Just silence. I waited for a few seconds before saying hello. When I did, the phone immediately hung up and I was left confused. I tried calling again and this time the phone just seemed to ring endlessly. Around an hour passed of me calling her before I got the bright idea to call one of her friends. The self-proclaimed leader of their little group, Nikki, answered on the first ring. She drunkenly shouted into the phone asking who it was, and after quite a few minutes, I managed to tell her. I asked her where Kate was, and after another few minutes, she told me that Kate wasn't feeling well, and went to sleep in the hotel room. I breathed a sigh of relief and thanked her, though I doubt she heard me. After hanging up, I reasoned that when I called Kate, she probably answered in her sleep and the phone must have gotten disconnected. I decided that I would just try to give her another call in the morning. When I got up, the very first thing I did was reach for my phone and called Kate. After a few rings, she finally answered. I asked her why she hadn't called me over the past couple of days and she told me she had gotten sick. Kate didn't quite sound like herself. She sounded very strange. Apathetic almost like all the emotion had been drained from her. I chalked it up to her being sick and offered to pick her up, but she declined. She told me the trip would be over soon and she would be home. I relented, and before I could tell her I hoped she felt better, the line went dead. The whole phone call was bizarre. Kate has been sick numerous times, like deathly ill, but somehow still managed to go to work and function as if nothing was wrong. It was just one of those weird traits that I knew about her. Another two days passed without any word from Kate and as soon as I was about to call her again, a car pulled into my driveway. Kate stepped out of the car and I walked out to her. I asked her if she was feeling any better, but she just nodded silently and went inside. That was about a month ago, and I firmly believe something happened to Kate during that trip, but I've been unable to find any concrete evidence. After she made it home that first day, she went directly to bed without speaking to me. I tried to reason that she was just exhausted from being sick on the trip, though as more days went by, her demeanor never changed. She would wake up, 
go to work, come home and go to bed all without hardly speaking to me. Every time I would attempt to sit down and have a conversation with her, she'd just express how tired she was and would go to bed. This wasn't normal for Kate. While she was typically quiet and reserved, she still enjoyed spending time with me and ranting about her work. That's not the weirdest thing that has changed since she has gotten back from that trip. After a week of her being back, I found myself randomly waking up in the middle of the night to find her standing next to our bedroom window, staring out of it. When I asked her what she was doing, she didn't respond. I climbed out of bed and touched her shoulder. When I did, she would slowly turn around and get back into bed. I wasn't sure what to think. Kate has never had a history of sleepwalking before. She continued to do this for the next two nights, and on the second night, I didn't say anything and I just watched her. She stood at the window for around an hour and a half. Then she walked out into the living room without turning on a single light. I followed her quietly, wondering what the hell she was doing. She stopped in front of our living room window and stared out of it. I was starting to get concerned that something was seriously wrong with my wife. In my desire to get some answers, I gave Nikki another call while Kate was at work. When she answered, I asked if anything happened to Kate during the trip and she took a few moments to respond. She said that when they arrived that they had been together for most of the trip. She said Kate had gotten sick relatively early in the trip and stayed in the hotel for the duration. I asked if she had done anything strange and Nikki mentioned that a few hours before the girls went to the club, Kate went to the store across from the hotel. Nikki said that she had been gone for almost an hour and as soon as they were about to go looking for her, Kate showed up at the hotel. I then asked if Kate had been acting strange at all during the trip, and she told me no, that she was a bit more quiet than usual, but she just attributed that to being sick. Nikki said they offered to take her home, but she declined. I thanked her for letting me know, and I hung up. Another week passed after speaking with Nikki, and Kate's behavior has only gotten worse. One night, I awoke expecting to find her once again staring out of the window, but when I opened my eyes, Kate was nowhere to be found. I walked out into the living room, and she wasn't there either. It took me a few more minutes before I finally found her. She was standing outside in our backyard, staring up at the sky. When I approached her, I could hear her softly whispering to herself, though it didn't sound like any language I had ever heard before. I gently touched her hand and asked if she was alright. She turned and looked at me. I'll never forget what I saw in that brief few seconds. Her eyes were as black as ink. This caused me to take a step back, but after she blinked a couple times, her eyes had gone back to normal. She quietly walked inside the house and went to sleep. During that week, I found her in a bunch of different places each night. The bathroom standing in the dark, staring at the running shower, standing in the closet, staring at the wall. On the last night of the week, as I got up to go find her once again, I found her standing on our front porch, only she was facing our front door, standing a few inches away from it. She has since stopped from wandering around our house in the middle of the night, but has progressed onto something creepier, she now just sits up in bed and stares at me. Every single night for the past week, she sits up quietly and stares at me all night. I'm not sure what to do or who to call. I've tried looking up suggestions on the internet, but have only received a few responses. Some people mention a doctor, others a psychiatrist, and a select few have suggested contacting a priest. I'm at a loss. Yesterday, I received a call from her work. They asked me if Kate would be returning anytime soon, and when I inquired further, they told me that she hasn't been back to work since her trip. This struck me as odd as Kate still leaves for work every single day. If she isn't going to work, then I have no idea where my wife is going all day. I'm writing this to ask for some more suggestions. 
Hopefully I'll get some more answers this way regarding my current situation. Have any of you ever dealt with this type of thing before? Have you ever encountered someone who does strange things at night? It's probably nothing and maybe she just needs time to recover. But I can't shake the feeling that Kate never came home from that trip she took. But something else did. <laughs>